Assalamualaikum and what's up everybody Today we're going to cover topic number 2 which is toxic substance and confined space hazards It is very important to identify the toxic material and the hazards uh, involved during welding in the confined space What we see in the picture now is is one of the uh, ugly thing that happened to our skin when we are exposed to uh, toxic substances such as uh, arsenic, cadmium, chromium, and others. And here you are looking at picture B. This is the picture of the human lungs that already affected by. Uh, toxic fumes which is uh, cadmium the picture of this lung was taken from a person who already passed out during a welding process so toxic is toxic substance is bahan bertoxic in Malay okay a toxic substance is a substance that can be poisonous or cause health effects Toxic substance can be in three form, whether it's solid, liquid, or gas. Fumes and gases. Okay, fumes are composed of airborne part- solid particles of welding consumables, base metal or coatings, and most of the fumes are came from welding consumables. They are formed when a metal is heated above its boiling point and its vapors condense into very fine particles. So what's in welding fumes? Basically, welding fumes consist of metals which are antimony, arsenic, beryllium, cadmium, chromium, cobalt, copper, lead, manganese, mercury, nickel, silver, vanadium, and others. And there are also gases in welding fumes such as argon, helium, nitrogen, carbon, uh, carbon dioxide, nitric oxide, nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, ozone, and others. Okay, we are looking at a table that was taken from a American Welding Society handbook, volume number one. So in this table, seventeen point two. So this table uh, showing you what kind of emitted metals or their compounds when you use any base or filler metal. Such as, we look into the first uh, base of filler metal, carbon and low alloy steel filler. <coughs> the possible emitted metals <coughs> or their compounds are chromium, manganese, and vanadium. Or uh, maybe uh, the, the the most famous uh, filler when you are using small process is stainless steel uh, filler. Uh, E6019, E6018, those are stainless steel or, or basic uh, base, basic filler metal. So uh, the emitted metal, the met- emitted fumes from that uh, filler are chromium, manganese, and nickel. For manganese steels and hard facing materials uh, filler, uh, they are chromium, cobalt, manganese, nickel, vanadium, and if you uh, if you if you look at this table, chromium is um, one of the uh, one of the common fumes that came out from from almost all filler metal. Okay, you see here every filler metal type here will emit. Chromium. Okay. So uh, the respirat- 
respiratory protection needed when we're dealing with uh, welding and when we're dealing with fumes so first thing that we need to do is uh, we have to stay upwind okay stay upwind keep out of the plume or, or fume all right second is uh, general and local exhaust ventilation uh, like, like like i said in the previous uh, previous lecture uh, if general ventilation is not there we need to use local exhaust ventilation or we call it force ventilation and then respiratory aid so there are a lot of uh, type of respiratory aid that you can get from the market from the cheaper one to the uh, expensive one but uh, the normal mask that we wear right now during covid is not suitable for welding so uh, but during welding most of uh, most of the welder does not wear this respiratory aid maybe because they are already general ventilation or forced ventilation in in the welding area and others what we need to do is we need we can use a uh, substitute material such as water based cleaner to clean the base metal okay uh, because uh, some of the chemical used to clean the ma base metal or base material uh, contains uh, contains chemical that can uh, that can emit very dangerous uh, fumes and make sure degreasing solvent dried up from the surface can we decrease uh, the base metal surface we have to make sure the agent the solvent is dried up we before we perform welding okay and then we goes to welding in confined space okay confined space is a small or restricted space in which poor ventilation may exist due to the size or shape of the space okay, so for example the, the vessel or uh, a pipe that you have to perform welding from inside and then what's the danger that uh, happens inside the confined space uh, is uh, asphyxiation eh? is kekurangan oxygen right and then uh, possible explosion and uv radiation and heat so what we need to do before entering the confined space is we have to make sure the oxygen levels inside the space is minimum 19.5 percent and between 19.5 percent and 23.5 percent Oxygen level inside our inside the air is typically 20% and the rest are the nitrogen but we are not even breath nitrogen we are only we only breathe oxygen but so so that's why we need to make sure the oxygen level inside the confined space is within that so the numbers is 19.5% and 23.5% so between that anything lower it's not suitable to do any job inside okay because if uh, because if the oxygen level inside the confined space or anywhere uh, are lower than 90.5 so that's why we will so the asp asphyxiation will happen uh, when when it happen we will not even uh, realize when we going to uh, pass out right Uh, second is uh, the, the 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 area need to be tested for toxic or flammable gases, dust, and vapors. Okay, during uh, during during uh, on job, okay, while while the welder inside, so continuous monitoring gas detector must be wear. Okay, like in the red circle there, the the welder is wearing the gas detector personal gas detector so whenever uh whenever the oxygen level is dropped down or whenever the detector 
detecting a uh, flammable or toxic gas it will uh, give warning to the welder so the welder can uh, can uh, get out from the, the the area as fast as he can okay and then the emergency air supply must be there and then there must be a person uh, very knowledgeable in rescue procedure must be stationed outside okay there must be a, a backup person who is very knowledgeable in rescue uh, procedure okay uh, that, 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 and he must be able to assess the, the, the guy the welder inside okay whenever if, if the welder pass out inside the uh, vessel he must be able to bring the guy out okay and then the welding power source must be placed outside to avoid any explosion happens inside the confined space okay so what is the exposure limit okay how much actually the fumes that are allowed for us to inhale without without uh, without causing us to uh, to death all right so there are, there is a term called TLV which is threshold threshold limit value so threshold limit value is a concentration of airborne substance may be repeatedly exposed without adverse effect okay and there's another one that called TWA which is time weighted average so time weighted average is 8 hours per working day or 40 hours work week 40 hours work week okay when these two combines it will become TLV TWA okay so I'm giving you an example here if TLV TWA for aluminium film is equal to 5 milligram per meet, per cubic meter okay 5 milligram per cubic meter so the maximum of 5 milligram per cubic meter of aluminium fumes is allowed for exposure for 8 hours per day or 40 hours work week okay so this is the explanation okay so the same example I'm giving you TLV TWA for aluminium fumes is 5 milligram over 5 milligram per cubic meter okay 5 milligram per cubic meter so the maximum of 5 milligram per cubic meter of aluminium fumes only okay is allowed for exposure for 8 hours per day or 40 hours work week okay suppose we have a, a square here or breathing or breathing area that have the sizes of one cubic meter okay one meter length one meter depth and one meter height okay so consider that this cube is the breathing area okay so if there are five milligram of aluminium fumes inside this cube okay and the guy or the welder is exposed to it for 8 hours per day or total of 40 hours per week then it's okay it's all right the exposure exposure limit is not ex exceeded okay but if there are 10 milligram of aluminum fumes inside the breathing area or inside the cube okay and he uh, doing a welding job inside there for 8 hours per day or 40 hours per week then it is considered overexposed okay reason is because the TLV okay is exceeding 5 milligram even though the guy or the welder uh, doing the job for uh, 8 hours per day only but the, the amount of the welding uh, the aluminum fumes is already exceeding 5 milligram okay so it is overexposed okay if there are 5 milligram of welding or of, of aluminum fumes okay and he is exposed inside the, 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 the cube for 10 hours per day or 50 hours 
total per week okay then it is also considered as over exposed because even though the fumes is uh, is within the limit only 5 mg but the guy is already exposed for more than 8 hours per day which is 10 hours and in total 50 hours per week so he is over exposed right okay so the exposure limits for every substance or every fumes uh, already specified by NIOSH okay and NIOSH they also use uh, this abbreviation which is REL TWA this is the same uh, REL is recommended exposure limit also the same as what we discussed just now TLV okay and uh, as per example given uh, aluminum fumes is a 5000 microgram uh, per cubic meter which is also equivalent to 5 milligram per cubic meter when we look at cadmium fumes okay cadmium fumes it says there lfc in the bracket ca meaning that lfc is lowest feasible concentration because cadmium fumes is a cancer risk substance okay meaning that cadmium fumes if possible avoid okay we, we assume it as zero exposure limit because it's very very dangerous same goes to chromium hexavalent chromium hexavalent is one type of uh, chromium fumes and when you look at the, the exposure limit there is only one only one microgram is allowed per one cubic meter so it is very very low so if possible you have to avoid this uh, these fumes so so how does this um, this substance uh, uh, measure so um, look at the, the, the figure there so there the, the breathing breathing zone is uh, around one meter around one meter red uh, around one meter one meter diameter around our our nose so uh, when the person uh, authorized person or the welder uh, want to do the job he need to wear the sampler that that will uh, measure the exposure or the the, the amount of TLV uh, within the breathing area so whenever the exposure limit or the TLV amount is too high, then the, uh, there must be an uh, alternative way to do the job. So uh, for group activity, I would like you to uh, find out the implications to welders have for five toxic substance. For example, what we have discussed just now, let's say uh, like, like, like uh, chromium or cadmium you just this out here chromium cadmium arsenic or whatever that you can find out and please put down here and implication to welder's health okay such as uh, skin irritation or or death okay okay i think uh, that's all thank you very much